Hi, I'm Norm Perillo from Wood Skills, and I'd like to talk about a few woodworking books I've uh, written. My recent book is Quiet Woodworking in an Unquiet World. It talks about my movement to uh, hand tools from high tech to low tech, a woodworker's journey, which chronicles my journey from my former high tech career to my uh, current furniture making career. Along with that, I offer courses through woodskills.com. The courses range from a basic woodworking course right through to furniture design and a comprehensive design and making course. All books are available in both print and digital format. I'm often asked how I store my, because uh, I tend to work a lot with inlay and small components and uh, my furniture pieces. And I'm often, often asked how I store the, uh, the, uh, the components. Once you've a uh, considerable amount of offcuts when, when you work with inlay, every little component becomes precious and you could use it later in a, in a different design as a different element in a, in a furniture piece. So I had to come up with a system of uh, organizing and storing all the small components. And it's a very good question because uh, this uh, has always presented itself as a dilemma on how to separate the, uh, the different types of components, the uh, exotic wood components for inlay, the Kamiko leftover offcut parts that I could use again in a different uh, Kamiko motif or pattern both thick, uh, thicker p components and then th much thinner components for sort of marquetry, that sort of uh, element. And uh, I uh, originally I began with uh, using, I, I'm a former uh, box maker, so I would store a lot of my, uh, my, my leftover offcuts in, uh, in uh, wooden boxes that I had left over from my early days of uh, box making. This one box and a considerable amount of parts in here. But, but over the years I've sort of run out of boxes. I've given them several away after I've, I've moved from box making to furniture making. So I, uh, I had a few left and I think this is uh, two or three boxes I have left. This is a, it's an option. It's an option, definitely an option if you're a box maker, but if you're not a box maker, it would mean you'd have to go out, you'd have to actually create a box to be able to store your, uh, your offcuts and, and, uh, and all the different small components that are left over from a, from a furniture project. So, so that's one option. But I've come across uh, a better option. And the better option is the cigar boxes. These are uh, widely available at cigar stores. Almost every cigar store stores their uh, their newly arrived cigars in, uh, in these boxes and then sells them individually or sells them as a, as a whole box. And they usually have boxes left over. They're actually well-built boxes. And to give you an idea how well-built they are, the, uh, there's a whole industry of, uh, cottage industry of creating uh, uh, banjos or small uh, musical instruments out of cigar boxes. They're very rugged, they're very well-built and they have good hinges. So they last a long time. And uh, for the most part, it's uh, it's very light, imported uh, exotic, uh, probably a light mahogany. And so they come in different sizes, and I've, uh, I've acquired a few. And these are the ones I've acquired and I've been using. And I divide them into uh, sizes and uh, categories. So this uh, this particular box has my uh, off several offcuts from Kamiko, the basswood strips I use in my Kamiko and uh, smaller components I use for the uh, actual Tomiko jigs and they're all marked so this uh, this has helped me considerably because I can actually go and to this box and uh, and pick small parts up when I'm, when I'm working with Tomiko. There's another box. Now this box is unusual that it holds all my round components and dowels and, and different uh, diameters so I, uh, I know where to go when I need the uh, round parts. So I, the, the goal is to not, to not uh, combine all the different components of different uh, uh, geometry for round parts or rectangular parts or square parts together. And so this, this helps quite a bit when I'm looking for uh, different size dowels that I, I've already cut. So this is ideal instead of using a I'm going back to a long dowel stock and cutting a piece off, I can use whatever I had left from a, a different project. So boxes, uh, different qualities of course, they're all fairly rugged, but this is a probably a more high-end box. It's solid wood actually, 
and I picked them up for a couple of dollars a piece. You can pick them up for a couple of dollars because the cigar store uh, owners, uh, the people who run the cigar stores, really have no no uh, idea what to do with the boxes unless somebody comes along and wants them. So, so these are uh, different sized components. Again, they're small pieces of uh, figured woods that I've. Uh, that I, I just can't throw away because I know I'll use them inevitably in a different furniture project. So there's a lot of exotic woods, black wood, ebony, and uh, you can see all the different outfits I've used for anyway over the years. There's an unusual piece and that's, that's an outfit, so it's crazy to throw that away when you, you know you're going to use that in the future. There's a different piece. This is already a, a triangular piece and that's ideal if I'm working with that. So you really would need a, uh, some method to, uh, to store them. This would be a handle, so it's got a shaped uh, tenon on one end and it fits into a slot, a mortise on, uh, on a box, uh, more than likely a drawer or a box, I'm not sure. And uh, so that's an idea of a larger box with different sized pieces. I'll move on to this box. And this again is uh, more pieces or maybe light colored woods, not so much exotic woods that I've used for uh, their leftovers from furniture projects. So this is a lighter box. And they're uh, very decorative. The boxes are very decorative. I like to uh, show them the people. Here's another unusual box. It's, uh, it's wood, but it's, uh, it's kind of fancy. And it has uh, some more offcuts. So this is probably small strips that I use for banding in a different furniture piece. So again, it's uh, exotic woods combined with uh, satin wood, combined with uh, domestic woods and uh, black wood or ebony. Different sizes, and that would be it. And now these are uh, these are boxes that I haven't even used yet. I haven't set them up for anything. Again, they're very inexpensive, fairly inexpensive, relatively speaking, compared to having to create your own box with a compartment. Now, we're moving on. I've also, uh, whenever I, I find small boxes, here's another box with a sliding top. Whenever I find boxes like this at a flea market or a, an antique store or somewhere at an estate sale, I pick it up, usually for a couple of dollars or a dollar. I used to store, uh, store my, uh, my hardware, in this case, all the hot size screws and, and uh, hardware and nuts and bolts and uh, some electrical stuff. But this is ideal, so it's, they're fairly strong and they're, uh, and I, it's my go-to, so I know when, I'm, when I need some hardware for a jig or, some, or a, a bench, a workbench appliance, I know where to go. So this is how I store my uh, my uh, leftover offcut furniture components, and it's it's an often asked question. It's a good question because uh, you need to uh, to uh, come up with a system and uh, separate the different types of uh, components. So we know as furniture makers and woodworkers that storage of uh, of offcuts is critical and important because we inevitably we do use those offcuts and. Uh, in the future, <clears throat> they've already been finished. For the most part, they're dressed and uh, dimensioned, so we can uh, we can create a project from them and use them that way, or just add them as an element. And I have uh, good storage for uh, for my larger offcuts. I have I have bins in the, another level of my 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 workshop here. The smaller parts have always been an issue of how to store them and how to separate them. So the cigar boxes are ideal. So I would sort of recommend you look into this if you're uh, if you deal with small components like this and uh, use it to your advantage. They're already they're they're fairly rugged. They've already been created. They have they're hinged for the most part. Some have metal hinges. Most have metal hinges, and others have. Uh, different type of hinges, but they're not metal. So you can use that for lighter parts. So, uh, well, I thought I'd share that with you today so I can share that with you and what works for me and what doesn't work for me, along with this uh, tool cabinet behind me that works very well for me. And now it's not, a, the original cabinet was, uh, did not have the deep doors to store the tools, so I've upgraded the doors and out of the center section to house more tools as I've acquired more tools and 
I've also added these two, uh, these two uh, fairly rugged shelves that have called my, uh, my restored uh, plow plants that I've restored in the last couple of years. So I've had to do all this, but always keeping in mind that I want the depth is critical and keep it at a minimum so I, can, so I have enough distance from my workbench to the, uh, to the actual cabinets when they're open and when they're closed. That's definitely not an issue. I have a dry erase board here, then I can keep create notes and update the notes. So that works really well. And it keeps the tools, uh, keeps dust away, dust and moisture away from the tools. So that's ideal, so, except for this section. <clears throat> I don't think I'll be putting a door on that. So it's always important to work with the space you have when you're uh, when you're looking at storing tools or components or uh, or offcuts, and this is ideal for me. So I do have other cabinets on other walls of my uh, my upper level, my hand tool uh, section of my workshop here, and uh, I'll show that at a different time. But so I like to I like to have doors on my cabinets to uh, to keep moisture and dust away, because I know that works. My earlier workshops I did not have doors. I had some cabinets without doors. And, I noticed the dust will just accumulate on the uh, on the metal surfaces over time, so I thought I'd share that. So please subscribe, and I'll continue to share uh, whatever processes and te techniques I've uh, developed and uh, and acquired over the uh, over the years to to be able to, to become more a more a more efficient furniture maker and woodworker. So Wood Skills is the uh, is the channel, and uh, thank you for uh, for taking the time to watch this and. Uh, I'll create a video about something else very shortly. Thank you.